simple cubic unit cell is the simplest repeating unit of most lattice cell structures. I will show you in this video how to model the compressive and shared behavior of such lattice cell structures in Abacus so that in the end we can determine such result as this union cell and share simulations. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Welcome to CM Videos. This is a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever computational problem that you're dealing with. The paper that we're going to be using as a reference for this video is this publication. In terms of the virtual domain, these are the virtual domain that we're looking for. So something that looks like this. So there's a simple unicell, a single cubic lattice cell structure with dimensions given of the struts. And then ultimately, we are going to generate a simple cubic lattice cell structure that looks like this. If you are interested in how this is done, I made a video already about this. So please look in the cards so that you can find the video that talks about how to generate this simple cubic lattice structure. In terms of the material that we're going to be using for this, so these are the properties of the material that we're going to be using. Again, it's taken from the source. Parameters that make up these properties are given. So it's a Johnson Cook plasticity model that we're using to model the material, which is a standard alloy material. Let's look at the formulation of the Johnson Cook plasticity and how we can identify that you know, just to understand the theory behind this. So basically a stress chain plot that looks like this, we'll have an elastic region, which will be defined by the Young's modulus E. So we need the E value for our model. We need also the initial yield stress. And then following the yield stress, what happens can be an isotropic hardening as shown in this case, it could also be a softening. So this is where the Johnson Cook parameter comes in, whereby the yield stress becomes a function of the equivalent plastic strain within the model. So we need to define what the equivalent plastic strain in the model and then relate that to the yield stress of that material. So what Johnson Cook was able to do here was that expression can be written in this equation with constants A, B, C, and, and so on and so forth. And these are the things that we see reflected in the table presented previously. Details of this and some of these things I've said, you can get a little bit more information about this by looking at section 10.5.6 of the book and applications. So the case studies for this would include the universal compression in y-axis, and an in-plane YZ compression. So this is what the compressive case will look like and this is what the shear case will look like. So let's get into Abacus and begin to do this modeling. Okay, so here we are in Abacus. So if you had already looked at the previous video that I showed about this, which again is in the cards, please to find it out. It already ended up by showing you how to create this unit cell. So that's what we have here, which is a simple cubic lattice cell unit cell. So we are not going to do a model on this. We're going to do it on a three by three unit cell which is kind of what we see here. So we're going to begin here to do our model. So the first thing we need to do is to create the material that we need. So clearly we, our material is going to be a titanium alloy. So what are the parameters that we need to use to fit into this model? So we get the density. The density is 4430 e to power minus nine because we are, our model is in millimeters. So then the elasticity of the model, 113.8 e to power three and the Poisson ratio is 0.342. Now we can then go into the plasticity case. Instead of just a simple isotropic plasticity, we're going to look for a Johnson Cook plasticity. So the A value is 1098 gigapascal, which we leave in that way. The B is 1092, N is 0.93, M is 1.1. Melting temperature 1878, transition temperature 715. So of course there are other things that we need to do. So under the sub options, so we look at the rate dependent sub option, how we create the rate dependence in the model. And then we'll go back to a Johnson Cook model. Johnson Cook requires to specify a C. Strain constant is 0.014 and the strain rate, the reference strain rate is obviously one. So that specifies all the details we need about our rate dependent P. Now we create a section for that. So section, now we can go ahead and try and do a section assignment by selecting that and then we'll assign it until it's it any more long, so which is good. So we'll try and mesh the model. So 0.4 is recommended. And then, you know, we'll use it a tetrahedron to model that. And that gives us a mesh model, which looks good. So there are a few other things we need to do. So let's create a, few, a bit of some set. It's a white top set. So we'll hover around the top and select that. And then we could then turn over to the bottom end and then do the same thing again. So this is Y bottom set. 
okay so the other thing that we need to do is to find where we're going to put our reference point so we will have to identify what that point will look what would be and then according to here that value is zero so we collect that details and then we can now plug in our reference point so if we switch back to the part module so our reference point can then be put into that location so however in the z-axis we could make that to become let's say 16. so the idea is that so that you have a point located outside and then we create a reference point for that so that's a reference point set and that's with for that so we've got all that so we need to create an assembly of this particular case so this one then we can then create a step so we can use a loading step a static general loading step is acceptable now our history output so we're going to call it our reference point history output so that will be attached to the reference point set and our f1 u2 and u3 so these are the key parameters that we need for this model so we've got all that done and then we can then think about our boundary condition so clearly our base will be fixed the y base fixed and we want it done as an initial time step displacement so we look for the y base so we know the y, y bottom or y base has to be fixed in every possible direction so which is good so that we can then have an effective compression so the other thing we need to do here is that our y comp load y compressive load would obviously have to be a loading step attached so that will be attached to the reference point so and we're only looking for what's happening in the y direction so the y compression load for something that is 12 millimeters so we could do let's say eight okay and minus eight because we want it to be in compressive direction so that's that then to now link this behavior to what's happening then we need to create a constraint interaction a constraint so we we'll call this our constraint and that constraint equation will obviously have values from one minus one the reference point here will be from the top to the reference point set and then that will be in the two direction so that tells us that we want to move the second the top direction in a compressive case so now this behavior is linked to that and we have to so we can then rename that particular first model and call it y comp okay and then we can create a model a copy of that so that we can look at our yz shear so the yz shear would look like the y comp case the only difference here is that in terms of more boundary condition so our y comp load we're going to call it our yz load shear load and so it's going to move away from the two location to the three location so that we can then experience each being pushed back which is a shear deformation now we need to introduce just one more so our y top roller so we need to introduce a roller support at the top so that the body will not deform so every other places are constrained except the three axes so this way the top is constrained so you have only a planar shear deformation at the top okay so what we see now is the result so if we just look at the compressive behavior of this three by three lattice cell structure with cubic unit cell and then you can see clearly what's happening here that there's a little compression and the central columns the central columns undergo consistent compressive behavior across and the behavior is quite uniform and this is in terms of the von Mies stress so if we look at the plastic strain it gives us an idea where there's a lot of plastic deformation on the struts as the struts undergo you know compressive behavior and even some form of buckling so on the edges here you can see buckling happening which you would expect you know with most lattice cell structures they tend to deform by buckling so let's look at the shear response as well so in terms of shear we get a nice consistent shear deformation as the structure is being pushed on the yz plane and again you get nice simulation across or mistress this concentration of shear distortion at those connectivities as we'll expect in this kind of model so there's a, a uniform deformation so if you look here there is a concentration of shear deformation and those connections between the vertical struts and the horizontal struts and those are the points you see a lot of dominant shear deformation so if we again look at the plastic strain so you can see the plastic strain is being accumulated again at those transitions between the x and y oriented struts if we look also at the shear dominant response for the 2 3 plane then you could see very interesting so on the 2 2 plane at those points there's an accumulation of the shear stress 
in the model. The final thing we're going to do is to talk about the extracting of stress strain data. So if we go back to the Y compression data, so we click here and operate on the history output. During the setup of the model, we already told the model which history output we want to be tracking. So now in this Y compressive behavior, what we want is to track the reaction force in that two plane on that face and then press down shift control and then we press F2. So the displacement in the Y direction and the reaction force in Y direction is what we need and then you plot it. Okay, so it gives you this trace. So what we're going to do is to use the plugin tools, Excel utility to get the raw data, which we are then going to use to do it for the analysis. So this is the raw data. So I'm going to copy this raw data. So I've already formatted this spreadsheet for analysis of the results. So what we're going to do is that we're going to paste that information in this region. So there's a the reaction force in the Y direction, it's between the Y direction. This is a bit of the geometry, the length, the width, and the height of the alley. We'll talk about the total area in a moment, but then we can again work out what the Young's Mountain effective strength is. And so these are the information that we found here. So the Young's Mountain is the region and the effective strength is the biggest ultimate tensile strength in the model. So we're going to do the same in terms of the shear. So if we go back to the shear, so to extract the real data, we're going to history output. Now for the shear in the YZ plane, so we're looking at the reaction in the Z axis. So our reaction force will be RF2 and then pressing down control and then the displacement in that axis. So that's what we need to we'll plot it. So now this gives us a plot. So we are going to then get it from Excel utility, from current plot. So that we get the raw data, which will then operate. So this is the raw data for the shear case. So what we need to do is to copy that and then we'll go back to the reference script. So what we're going to do is we'll paste it into that environment and everything will work out well. But clearly for us to get the shear, we're dividing with the current force divided by the area, okay? And here I've quoted 87.4. So what does that mean? So if we go to the path module, so clearly what we're doing is that we're looking at the reaction force on the top of this surface divided by the cross-sectional area, but it's not a continuous area. So we can we need to find a way to calculate this. There is no easy way within Abacus to just find the area of such a shape. So with that, so what I've done is I've written a Python script which will be available for you to download in the description section of this video. So this is what this Python script basically looks like. So it's, it's, it's a straightforward script. The key thing you really need to do is to find this information. So we need to know the model name uh, and which is this and the path name, which is that. And then we need to put a point on the face that we are looking to extract the values from. We need to locate a point so that we can then find the area based on the surface defined by that point. So which is what is happening here. So if we go back into this model, so if you look here, this is a Ycom. So this is the name of the model. This is the name of the part that we're working with. So to extract a point on this, so I'll do this. So let's say I'm extracting that point and then click done. So what we'll notice here is that at the base here, it gives us a value of minus eight, zero and zero. So if you come back here, minus eight, zero and zero is working. So everything is fine. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of that, then go back to my backus and then in the command kernel, paste that information. So the key is that at the end, when we finish paste it, so it gives us what the area of that face will be each 85.75. So that's the area of that face. If we're interested in the area of another face, we can do the same and find it. So once we find this area, then we can then go and put them in, in this total area there and total area here. So this gives us how to find the total area. And then with that, we can work out the stresses on those faces and we'll get the numbers that we need. So if we then do a comparison of this, so this is the Y tension behavior and it's a well compressive behavior and you could see a marked difference between them which is kind of the essence of this so clearly these structures are very good in terms of their compressive energy absorption and uh, when you have a lot of distortion due to shear they, they are not necessarily quite strong so if we look at also the properties that we generate in the model so the effective young's modulus in compression and strength are actually quite big compared to the other directions so again showing us that in terms of energy absorption the y compressive values for this kind of design is, is very good. If you want to see how I generated the virtual domain for use in this model, please look at this video here. Or if you're interested in your general understanding of lattice structures, this is a playlist on my channel that I encourage you to have a look at. Thank you for your interest in this channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe so that when content like this are made, you'll be the first to see it.